Brian demands guest rights. Ever since The Wolf of Wall Street broke the profanity record with its 500 plus uses of the F word, I've noticed a tendency in many R rated films since to use absurdly high amounts of profanity. On average, it seems an R rated film released today will have 100 plus F bombs. Why do screenwriters do this? If anything, I have found that less language in a film makes the use of it more dramatic as opposed to redundant. Do people truly find that profanity makes a film better? To me, it only alienates large amounts of viewers. Thanks very much. Um, no, I mean, look, the, the thing about language is just, it's like any other tool. Do guns make a movie better? Like if you bring a lot of guns into the 40-year-old virgin, does that make the 40-year-old virgin better? No. However, do a lack of guns make Commando better? No, Commando needs guns because that's the type of movie it is. That's what it needs. You know, I did, I did a, a film myself uh, called The Anniversary, and there's a lot of swearing in my movie The Anniversary, but the reason there's a lot of swearing in it is because it literally came from real conversations that me and the dudes that I hung out with actually said in the way we talked. It's just, that was just real life. You know, when you look at a movie like Godfather, or The uh, Goodfellas, let's say, and you look at um, the, one, the Joe Pesci character, for example, once you understand that character, to not have language coming out of his mouth would feel out of place and feel weird and feel odd. It would not fit the tone of what the movie is meant to be. Now, you said that language would alienate a large part of the audience. I disagree. I think it alienates somebody, but here's the thing. Anything in some movies will alienate somebody. Does a movie have violence in it? Well, that's going to alienate some people. Does the movie have some sexual situations in it? That's going to alienate some people. Well, does the movie have language in it? That will alienate some people. Somebody once said, and I use this phrase all the time, if you try to, to please everybody, you'll end up satisfying no one. So filmmakers need to make their movie and tell their story and then use the appropriate tools that they feel work in that story and use it. You know, we often said on this, like some people would ask us, why does everybody want comic book movies to be dark? Did they just think being dark makes the movie better? And the answer to that question is no. Making a movie more dark does not make it better unless it's the kind of movie that really does kind of need the darkness into it. So it, it all depends. So I don't believe there's any hard, fast rule for anything, for action, sex, language, any kind of stuff like that. It's, is it appropriate for this film? Now, you mentioned Wolf of Wall Street. It was totally appropriate for Wolf of Wall Street. It fit in Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. and Wolf of Wall Street would have felt odd understanding the flavor of it had it not been there. So it really all depends. But I agree. There are some movies that just throw in extra violence for the sake of violence, and it doesn't work, and it doesn't fit. They throw in some sex or nudity when it doesn't fit, and it doesn't work for the movie, or they just try to throw in a lot of language just for the sake of throwing in language that doesn't fit. But there is a place for it. At least that's my interpretation of it. Mark, how do you see it? That was it? a great... Point. And <laughs> I, uh, I, I like, I don't mind F bombs when it's in something like Wolf of Wall Street or Goodfellas or an action movie. When it bothers me is when you're using it to try to be funny, when the line on itself isn't funny enough, so you feel like you have to throw an F bomb in there. And there's a movie that I enjoyed a lot this year called Spy, but one of my one of my problems with it was that Melissa McCarthy is just dropping too many F bombs and it takes away the punch of it. It didn't I believe, fit. I believe if you're if you're showing a movie or you're you're doing stand up or in real life, if if you save the F bombs when you really want to accentuate something it hits so much harder and so sometimes in comedies that's when it bugs me but you're right if the character speaks like that then i can buy it on screen it's just easier for me to do it when it's an action film or a drama than a comedy christian yeah i agree with you guys and i think that it, it if it serves the story like you brought up wolf of wall street and goodfellas that's the way i imagine that all of those guys were talking and, yeah and like when you walk into that room that's what you were going to hear now a movie that i remember being excited about that was rated r um was remember Semi Pro with Will Ferrell? Yeah, that movie shouldn't have been rated R. It didn't no, work. It, it didn't work. And another movie recently just came out was uh, was Crimson Peak. Like how the 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 violence in that movie, like the it was really at points were so gratuitous that I didn't think it was necessary. It seemed like there was that one scene that made it an R rating. You didn't need that. You didn't scene. need it. There was, it was like it was so it was. It was intense and it was powerful, but I, it wasn't necessary to tell the story. And again, throwing back to like Goodfellas when they're stabbing the dude in the trunk, that that happened. That was necessary. And there's other times that not not that, that's a true story. Now there are other times that it, that it, it rated our film that it works. Bringing up like the Matrix and stuff too, the violence and stuff that happens in Matrix, <laughs> it all fits. Um, so yeah, I agree with everything that you guys said. As long as it fits in context. Sometimes they're they're pushing it to push in and it's not necessary and you could pull back. But I think sometimes 
a movie uh, it is in, is kind of held back because the audi- the studio wants a movie to have that audience of the 13, 14. Like for me, the first, and this makes sense, and I understand why they did it, but the first Hunger Games, if you read the book, is very dark and brutal, and it's a rated R book. You have to make that movie PG-13, obviously. Yeah. But you could have, if you shot a rated R version, it would make sense to shoot that as a rated R with the blood, with the extra violence, all that stuff. You know what would be really funny is if in Star Wars, if they finally see Luke, then Luke's like, what the fudge are you guys about to do? <laughs> they just start dropping F-bombs in Star Wars. You know right. who's great at dropping F-bombs and you might not know it? That girl right there, Ashley Mova, can drop. I try to tell people all the time. I try to tell people all the time mm-hmm. about her, and nobody believes me. They think I'm this, just such an angel. This little facade she puts on <laughs> all the time. But she uses it right. Like she doesn't. She doesn't do it constantly. I mean, it's it, it's a lot. But she 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 accentuates the right moment. Oh. She can really pepper in some bad language. You guys, you guys, I love you guys. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.